Hello lovely people, my name is Blanche and welcome to Feast in the Middle East and today I'm going to share with you my crazy yet fun experience of being featured on BBC World News. So, for most of you that have been following the show, you might know my background, that I was a journalist and a show host and I've been featured on numerous networks, television networks, and here I am in YouTube having been doing this show with you for some time, but nothing prepared me for what was going to happen with my appearance on BBC World News. Let me tell you the story and how it went down. So I went to bed on a Wednesday night and for whatever reason I had this nagging feeling at 3 a.m. to check my phone. And usually I don't, I like to sh shut off electronics before I go to sleep because I've read so many studies about how it doesn't help you relax and it doesn't help you sleep and you get insomnia and blah, blah, blah. But this particular night, I'm like, I, I feel like I need to check my emails. And lo and behold, I check my email and there's an email from BBC asking me if I'm interested to be interviewed by them about shawarma um, at basically 7 a.m. my time. Now I thought, oh my gosh, it's four hours from now. It's currently 3 a.m. I don't know if I can make this happen, but let me just respond and see what happens. So I responded, what is it you want me to talk about? And she like basically responded immediately. So I'm like, okay, uh, let's connect on WhatsApp. So we connected on WhatsApp and I talked to a really sweet gal and she actually came from California, but now she's living in London working for the BBC. So we had, uh, we chatted about that a little bit and she said, there's one thing, this interview needs to be conducted in Arabic. Now, I speak Arabic, but as many of you Arabic speakers know, there's two kinds of Arabic. There's like street talk Arabic, like colloquial Arabic, and formal Arabic. I don't know the formal Arabic. To be honest, I've never, I mean, it's like literally a different language. It is so different, so complicated. I don't know how to read and write Arabic, but I know how to speak it. It was my first language. So um, I thought, oh my gosh, I, how, I don't know if I'm gonna do this in, in formal Arabic. She goes, well, let me get a producer who can listen to your Arabic. He'll talk to you in Arabic and see, see how you do. And I was like, oh my God, this is like 3 a.m. and I can't believe I'm doing all this. So the producer got on the phone and he started talking to me in Arabic. He's like, oh, I think Arabic is great. I think it's gonna work out just fine. And I'm like, oh my God. So she's like, okay, so can you be ready by a 7 a.m. feed? Let's download Skype, anything you need so we can conduct this interview. So I was like doing audio checks and all this stuff at three in the morning. Needless to say, I didn't sleep for the rest of that night. And then I decided to do a crash course in formal Arabic to talk about shawarma because I didn't know how to speak about shawarma in formal Arabic. I called my mom for a crash course in formal Arabic. Mom, how do you say Ottoman Empire in formal Arabic? And how do you say, you know, 17th century, 18th century in formal Arabic? So my mom, she can speak in paragraphs. She's like, tell them about all of these details. And I'm like, mom, there's only so much I can transfer to my brain. This is going to be a one minute segment. Let's just try to figure this out. So at this point I had been practicing, I put extra concealer under my eyes because I hadn't been sleeping and I knew I had to be camera ready, put some makeup, just like slopped it on, got my tripod, tried to get some sort of fill light uh, that would look decent for the live feed. I turn on Skype and I'm listening to them and every other word is obliterated. I can't hear anything. The audio is so bad. And this guy who's hosting the show in Arabic, he's speaking like 100 miles an hour. So not only is he speaking formal Arabic, but he's speaking it so fast. So I'm dealing with a lot of challenges here. A, he's speaking a mile a minute. B, he's speaking formal Arabic. C, the audio is horrible. I can't hear anything. And so I'm standing by with my, you know, I'm just like grabbing at my hands, my knuckles are turning red. I'm like, how am I gonna do this? This is crazy, why did I agree to this? What am I doing? <sighs> so finally, after fumbling around, I try to get, I'm on the broadcast and I realize that I'm on, I can't even see myself. This is another thing, D, I can't even see myself while this is going on. So I hear him say Blanche and I'm like, okay, that must mean he wants to talk about Shawarma, and then he says Shawarma. So I started speaking in Arabic. I'll show you a clip of how this went down. So the Shawarma from the Atrak, of course, they call it Shawarma. It means that they put the meat in the sieve and put it on a plate so that it can be cooked. And of course, so that الحكم الحكم العثماني العرب كمان اتعلموا من الاتراك بس سموه شاورما وشاورما 
بيجي طبعا من الكلمه شوي تشوي اللحم على النار وبعدين الناس من اليونان والارمن كمان تعلموا يسووه بس سموه في اليونان بسموه يرو وفي الارمن بسموه تارني وهلا طيب. صار مشهور في كل العالم و... and then of course because I couldn't see him and I couldn't hear him I didn't realize that he was closing out the segment and I still kept talking <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's like, okay, Blanche, see you later. Oh, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Blanche, Blanche, I'm going to so it was very exciting to be on BBC World News talking about Arab cuisine because it's something I'm passionate about, I love, well-researched. But there are two important lessons I learned from this that I want to share with you. Number one, if you feel the nagging feeling to look at your email in the middle of the night, go ahead and do so. There's probably something waiting for you that you need to attend to. And number two, it is better to fail than to regret not doing it at all. I was actually terrified to do this for the first time in my life because even though I had plenty of uh, media experience to speak in this other formal language in the middle of the night with bad audio, it was just all a cluster, you know what? But I just said, I'm gonna give this my best shot because I'm gonna regret it if I don't even try it. And at the end, I got to meet some nice people on the phone, get to know the BBC staff a little bit better. So do something that scares you. If you do something that scares you, and I'm not talking about like jumping off a cliff or something, but just in everyday life, if you get a challenge, try to overcome that challenge and you will come out that much stronger. So for Feast in the Middle East, I am Blanche. Make sure you subscribe, hit like, and I will see you in my next episode.